I'm going to review today a Ninja Foodie, which is a combination of a pressure cooker and an air fryer. And I'm going to show you how to make chicken, rice, and maybe eggplant in it all at the same time. Hi, I'm Arvishi Pitre. My blog is twosleevers.com. And I just got this Ninja Foodie like yesterday. So I made one dish in it. Um, now I'm familiar with air fryers. I have an air fryer cookbook. I'm familiar with Instant Pots. I have uh, three Instant Pot cookbooks out. Uh, so I know how to use a pressure cooker. I know how to use an air fryer. But this one is a, a combination. And I was very, very curious how that would work. Now, I'm going to show you whatever features I've gathered um, from having had it for a day. But the first thing we need to do is we need to start our, uh, our chicken marinating because it's going to take about half an hour. So I don't like to do a lot of dishes. Uh, and I also feel like this helps marinate the chicken better. So I have a half a chicken. Okay, you could do a whole chicken, but I would cut it in half. The reason I have half a chicken is because I wanted to see the recipe was going to work. So I took a whole chicken, we cut it in half, and I did half, and it worked beautifully, so I feel comfortable showing you this one. So in any case, you know, whether you want to use chicken thighs or chicken uh, breast or whatever, just make sure it's got the skin on it, make sure it's however you want it. Put it in a plastic bag, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put in soy sauce, and we're going to put some water in it just to get the soy sauce to kind of move around. So I had a little too much in there. Uh, and then we're gonna put minced garlic in there. We will put minced ginger in here. And um, you really don't need a lot of salt because the soy sauce is fairly salty, but I'm gonna put some because I'm kind of trying to mock brine it, if you will. So we're gonna put a little bit of that. You could put white pepper powder, that would be more traditional in an Asian dish, but I didn't have any. And you might not have any either, so we're just going to put a little bit of black pepper. And then this, there's about a fourth of a cup of green onions. We're only going to use half. The other half are going to go into the rice. So I try to make this so that you could have some of the similar flavors um, and similar ingredients, and that way you weren't cutting, you know, six different things to make one dinner. Okay, soy sauce, water, ginger, garlic, salt, pepper, and scallions. And you're going to mix this up very noisily, I know. And you're gonna put it meaty side down so that you see all the marinade that's underneath uh, in the, on the meaty side. And you're just gonna set this aside while we finish what we're doing. I will walk you through the foodie now. As I said earlier, it's a pressure cooker and an air fryer in one. And the biggest question that I had was, how is this possible that one appliance can do both things? Because a pressure cooker cooks with steam and an air fryer has a heating element on top and it's got a fan. And I'm like, won't the steam get into the, the lid? How is this going to work? Well, the way it works is you have two lids. I don't know why this didn't occur to me, but I was a little slow on the uptake. Now, the interesting thing about it is that this is the air fryer lid. And let me turn it just a bit so that you can see it from an angle. Uh, the air fryer lid is attached to it. So it's hinged and it's just, it, it doesn't move. It's just pretty much going to sit there, okay? Uh, and it's going to be attached to it. Now, sorry, I'm a little clumsy. You have another lid that this thing came with, okay? And this is your air, your pressure cooker lid. You know it's your pressure cooker lid because A, it's not attached, uh, but the other thing is you'll see it has a ceiling ring, it has, uh, you know, place for the vent. It looks very much like every other electric pressure cooker you've ever had. The lid is actually not difficult, even for somebody not as spatial as me. On the front of this lid, so here's the back with a vent. On the front here is an arrow, and on the front here is an arrow. And you line those two up, and you just move it around and there you are and it's sealed okay so you have a separate now when it's pressure cooking let me be specific when it's pressure cooking this lid's going to stay on here i was a little bit concerned about whether we would get steam from this thing escaping uh, and hitting the hitting the um, lid the lid is uh, quite a bit out of the way i doubt that's going to happen now if you had sputtering and spitting you know maybe but it's it's pretty far out of the way i'm sure they accounted for that so uh, I'm going to move the pressure cooker lid out and then talk a little bit about what it came with. Now, I'm a gadget geek. I bought a whole bunch of other features and things that, you know, you might not need to. But what it comes with is um, it comes with this pot in there, obviously. This is a nonstick pot. It's actually, this is a six and a half quart, I believe. It holds... Um, 18 cups, the pressure max is about 17 cups. It's a lot wider than some of the other electric pressure cookers I have. 
Um, so I was a little bit concerned. I made one cup of rice and it, now the rice barely covered the bottom and I was a little concerned, but actually it was not an issue. It worked just fine. So here's your pressure cooking lid. I think most of us are familiar with this. It came with a very interesting crisper basket that I just love. Um, it's got, you know, the little starfish thing. Honestly, I don't know if this makes a difference or not. You know, I haven't seen any science. I've seen all the marketing hype about some of the other brands saying this really helps to diffuse the air. I don't know. Uh, I doubt it's going to do much sitting underneath, but you have a crisper basket. It's fairly sturdy. I don't know what it is, but it's got a nonstick finish and it fits right in here. Now, it's metal. So what you could do is you could put some uh, water at the bottom of this pot and you could put the crisper basket in and you could put vegetables, meat, chicken, whatever on top, and you could pressure cook like that, which I think is really nice. Uh, you know, you could make eggs, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't start me on the pressure cooker and eggs uh, debate. But when you're done, you just lift this off and you have it. So you could use this as a steamer rack for your pressure cooker. And of course, you can use it for when you're air frying. Let's say you put this on here and you put chicken wings on here. Chicken wings are notorious for how much grease they let out when you're air frying, which makes them delicious and crispy, uh, but it, it can make a mess. Now, the advantage of this is going to be you put your chicken wings on here, the fat's going to drip down into this nonstick container, uh, which can then just go into the dishwasher, which I love, right? Like all of this would be super easy to clean. So that's a nice little thing that it came with that I, um, I'm looking forward to using. And then it had what I thought was a rather ingenious rack. So it comes with this rack. Um, this rack can be used two different ways. So you could do this for a low uh, rack setting, uh, and then you could do this the other way around to steam things. Um, this would only really work uh, when you're air frying. It would really work if you had smaller pieces of meat, which means things like fillet of fish, uh, you know, a chicken breast, things like that might fit flat in here quite well on the high rack. So this same rack works both ways. And I am very spatially challenged, uh, as I have mentioned a few times. These legs turn, but honestly, I have not yet figured out why. Because it's not like it fits in here. It kind of gets stuck, and you can't get it in here this way. So that remains a mystery to me. But we're not going to worry about that. I'm often mystified, so that's not saying much. All right, so we have two different lids. We've got the crisper basket that it came with. Let me move that out of the way. And we've got this little handy dandy rack that goes both ways. It could be a low rack and it could be a high rack. So let's talk about some of the features and functions. So it's got, it's got a lot of things. It's got a pressure cook, steam, slow cook, air crisp, which is like air frying, bake and roast, and broil. Now, one of the things that makes it different from some of the other pressure cookers that I have used is that steam on here is truly steam. It's not under pressure. You leave the top on um, vent when you're doing it. So if you wanted to steam light vegetables, steam fish, you could certainly do that. You would put water to the bottom. You would put the rack, either a high or low side of it, and you could steam it. So let's just talk about the pressure, okay? So on the pressure cooker, you turn it on and... Um, Press twice and you see high. Okay, you could press low, you could make it low, or you could make high pressure by t um, messing with the temperature. So let me just show you again. I'm gonna hit stop. We're gonna hit. We're gonna hit pressure, and you can do um, high or low. Okay, so we're gonna do high for what we're looking for, and you can adjust times. Now, there are, I have not noticed if it comes with presets. I haven't been able to see any. So you do your four minutes, you see this pressure light come on, and you're good to go, okay? Let's explore some of the other options here. So I'm, I think you have to press twice to get to turn it off. So here we are, I'm gonna press steam. It gives you time in minutes. Steam is either on or off, right? There's no temperature. Uh, and then slow cook, you get high and low which is more intuitive because most of us are used to slow cookers that do both. For the air crisp, here's how it's gonna work. The lid needs to be closed for air crisp. Now remember, the attached lid is the air fryer lid. You press air crisp and um, you can set the temperature. Um, so I can do 50, 60, 75, 390, and 400, which is an odd jump from 60 to 375, but you know, we don't, I don't know that you need 365 necessarily all that often. And then you can set your time uh, in one minute increments and then you just press start and it goes. 
The bake roast function, again, it's like an oven, so you can set temperatures and times. Um, you know, if you were trying to bake a cake and not want to heat up the whole house, that would be a good way to go. And then the broil, I think, you know, again, it's going to work um, like every other broil does. It may not circulate hot air. The element on top may just come on and that's how it's going to work. Okay. So um, essentially there's one pressure cook function. All the others are non-pressure. You can use this to replace potentially a pressure cooker, a steamer, a slow cooker, an air fryer, and uh, oven and broiler. So let, let's say that you were uh, in a dorm or you were camping or you were in an RV or you were traveling or you were in a, in a, small, a large city apartment, uh, sorry, large city, small apartment. Um, this may be something you need. Now it's pretty big though, okay? So yes, it replaces a lot of appliances, but I'm about 5'5", five five and um, I won't tell you how big around I am. It's a little bit too much these days, but you can see, right? Like here I am and um, it's, it's massive, right? It's like, carrying a small baby or a four, you know, like a 14 pound turkey. So it's not, it's not small, but it, you know, it does a lot of different things. Okay. So just keep that in mind um, as you do it. I'm sure the website has dimensions so you can look and see how to do it. Okay. So those are the features. Now, one of the interesting things about this is that you can pressure cook and then without making uh, too many movements, moving the food around, you can then air fry it, which is what I ended up doing. So remember that chicken that was marinating? There's no way it's been 30 minutes, but I'm impatient, so we're gonna do it. And we have here um, rice. We've got some scallions, some ginger, salt, and water. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find my spatula. That's the first thing, here we go. Um, I'm gonna take this rice. I've rinsed some jasmine rice and I'm just putting it at the bottom. And you'll see what I'm saying about, you know, it's a very wide container. It's a very wide pot here. And then I'm gonna put in one cup of water. And a little bit of salt. This is a very tiny spoon. Don't yell at me for putting in too much salt. It's like a fourth of a teaspoon. Um, I'm gonna throw in some ginger slices. Ginger rice is just so good, it's so good. Anyway, I just sliced a little bit of ginger and then remember I had used half these scallions to marinate the chicken and then I'm gonna put the others in here, okay? Let me tell you, since I made this earlier, I can tell you this rice, oh my God. I'm trying so hard to eat low carb right now. Making this was not all that helpful. Um, it tastes like sticky rice because what's gonna happen is I am gonna put the chicken on top of this and the chicken is gonna cook under pressure on top of the rice. So the rice and the chicken are gonna cook at the same time. All of the juice and the fat from the chicken goes into the rice. So I don't know if you've ever had Hainanese chicken rice, but that's essentially what they do is you have ginger, you have scallions, um, and then you have the chicken fat um, goes into it. So we're doing that sort of, you know, ersatz way of doing that, okay? So we've got our rice and our you know, I feel like compelled to move this around, but it really didn't matter. It worked just fine. So I'm gonna leave it be. I'm gonna take this rack and I'm gonna put it down. This chicken now, I have to leave the marinade in here because I don't want soy sauce rice, um, but hopefully the marinade has permeated. You could do this for, you know, 24 hours in advance if that's what you preferred or half an hour or whatever, or you could do what I'm doing, which is not much in advance. Um, you're gonna take this chicken out Okay, I'm, do I'm using my hands, okay? This thing is not gonna work for me. If you're less, less klutzy than me, this might work for you. So it's got a lot of the marinade on here still, and I'm gonna put this chicken on top. So I have a half chicken. Like I said, you could put more than that in this. So the way I'm gonna do this now is I have to pressure cook this. So remember what I said? Line up the arrows to the arrows. Close this lid, so we turn it on. We press pressure. It's already by default on high pressure. I'm gonna give it four minutes, okay? And um, I press start. You see this blue light? It tells us it's working and it's gonna cook now for a while. So w one of the things I noticed earlier is one of the things I like about this one is that um, when it's done, uh, it goes automatically to the keep warm function, which many of them do. Uh, this one counts down so you can see how long it's been keeping warm, uh, and which is quite helpful. So because in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook the rice for 10, uh, excuse me, the rice and the chicken for four minutes. I know that does not sound like a lot for the chicken, but keep in mind the chicken is gonna get air fried. So it's gonna have heat on top of it, 
okay so allow this thing to come to pressure once it comes to pressure it'll automatically start to count down let it cook for four minutes as programmed and then let it sit for 10 minutes and then i'll come back and show you what to do at that point in the meantime i have made a mix of um oil um oil dark soy sauce and agave you can use honey and this is what we're going to baste the chicken with when we air fry so i'm going to set that aside Okay, let me be honest, I'm not sure this eggplant is going to work because I made it in the last batch and it was okay, it wasn't great. So eggplant may or may not be the right thing, but it'll give you an idea. Green beans would certainly work. You need something that's going to air fry in about um, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, so I'm just going to salt this eggplant a little bit. You know what I should have done is I should have cut the eggplant a little bit smaller. I might do that in the break. I might just cut it a little bit smaller, but I'm going to salt it and let it sit. Um, and then rinse it out so let some of the oil evaporate okay so while this cooks i'm gonna go off and uh, you know sit down and read a book or play a game or do something while it finishes and i'll come back and show you what to do next i'm Arvishi Pitre, blog is suslevers.com when you come back i'm going to show you how the foodie does the air fryer function and show you the delicious rice and chicken that it makes so i got distracted by a shiny object countdown went on for a little bit too long but as you see from this um this little float valve has gone down which tells us that it's off of pressure so remember what we were doing we were making chicken and rice uh, and we were going to then air fry it so let me take this out and there you are there's your chicken and the rice and of course all of the yummy fat from the chicken has has dripped down into the rice now what i'm going to do is i had mentioned earlier that i have dark soy sauce oil and uh, agave or you could use honey or anything else and i'm just going to baste this chicken with it okay i use the dark soy sauce because it's a little bit sweeter and it's, it's a little stickier so we want some of that to come on there um and honestly, if you weren't here, I would pick up this chicken and baste the bottom of it. But it's possible that it'll entirely fall apart, so I'm not going to do that right now. But I'm going to get as much of this as I can on there without overdoing it. And then what I did with the mushroom, the eggplant rather, I'm not sure this is going to work, okay? So previously what I did in the, the first batch that I made was I left the eggplant pretty uh, thick and I didn't salt and drain it and it was it's a little chewy. So what I did this time was I cut it up really, really small and I'm going to put this eggplant on the side of the chicken because what's going to happen, hopefully, is that as I air fry it, uh, that eggplant is going to get air fried. So I'm going to try to not pile it in one big pile just because you know you want as much surface area exposed as possible we'll see how that works and then because i want it air fried i'm gonna actually spray a little bit of oil on there because that'll help getting the surface done now i've taken off the pressure cooker lid i'm gonna put this down you just close it like this you come around the side you press air crisp i'm gonna do 400 for about I'm gonna say 15 minutes, but the advantage of air frying is that you can just open it and peek at any time, so it doesn't really matter. So let's get started, and there you are. It's air frying, and it's not very noisy, actually. So it's doing its thing. The vents are at the back, um, and that's how easy it is to just air fry. Now, you may be worried about the rice. I was worried. I was like, okay, we're air frying. What's happening to the rice? Well, a couple of different things. One, the chicken and the eggplant are sitting over it, so it's not gonna get heated and air frying the the air the heat is coming from the top the coil is in the lid so it's not like it's going to go in and you know heat the rice from underneath and cook it so I, I did 15 minutes on the previous batch and the rice was just fine in fact it was so good i'm going to show it to you so i'm going to bring the food that i made earlier and show it to you and you'll see how delicious it was okay so here we go can you see i'm hoping you can see from the top look how beautifully brown this is um, the eggplant, actually, you know, the other thing I had done with the eggplant was I had marinated it, um, it with the soy sauce and agave and whatnot. And I'm not sure that that was a good idea, but you know, hey, we're learning, so we tried it. So anyway, that's the chicken and this deliciousness underneath was the rice. So all of the fat from the chicken went down in here and some of the soy sauce, um, you know, that I had marinated the chicken in, et cetera, went down in here. And so you've got this I made jasmine rice. You've got a sticky consistency to the rice. And it actually reminds me of the stuff that you get in dim sum restaurants in 
lotus leaves. So I actually have a Chinese sticky rice recipe on twosleavers.com that you could check out. Uh, this rice is very much the same consistency and taste. And in fact, next time I do it, I might put uh, the Chinese sausage down in here along with some mushrooms and just cook the rice and the mushrooms and sausage underneath, put the chicken on top, and then I can flake the chicken and put it, put it into the rice and enjoy it that way as well for a second meal. So anyway, this was a Ninja Foodie. I'm Urvashi Pitre. The blog is twosleavers.com. There, there are tons of um, air fryer recipes and, and uh, pressure cooker recipes. Um, here's my latest cookbook, which is available for pre-orders. And I hope you check it out. It's got 100 recipes with, for air fryers using real food. And I have three uh, pressure cooker recipe books out as well that you might want to check out. So that's the review of the Ninja Foodie. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and note them. I'm going to try to answer them as I get more and more familiar with this. Uh, and I hope that was helpful. And I'll see you another time. Thank you.